Minister Young. Thank you very much, Minister Cox, Minister Dial Singh, Chief Medical Officer, members of the media, wider viewing and listening public, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but our diaspora scattered all over the world. Thank you all very much. This morning, I'd like to start by focusing on what we've been doing with respect to the borders. And just to bring us into context, to remind us that the reason that we've been able to return to fairly normal lifestyle and what we call a few weeks ago the new normal in Trinidad and Tobago is because of the good work that had been done previously and the way that we've handled this pandemic in Trinidad and Tobago, making Trinidad and Tobago a somewhat safer haven than many other jurisdictions in the world. The only thing that maintains this and allows us, the population in Trinidad and Tobago, to continue having fairly normal lives and back to normal, the reopening of the economy, the expansion of business on a daily basis, is the border control. By us keeping our borders closed and continuing to manage the entrance of persons back into Trinidad and Tobago, it has allowed the population of Trinidad and Tobago to get back to some life as normal. This is the most critical component going forward with respect to us continuing to, pop continuing to protect the population here in Trinidad and Tobago. And we cannot overemphasize or underemphasize that. It is a very difficult task with us managing it because we do have a lot of empathy for all of our nationals who are outside making the applications for approval to come back into Trinidad and Tobago and we're managing it as quickly as we can. You would have heard the CMO, the Minister of Health, talk about in the last few weeks how we've been managing. We still have over 500 persons currently under state quarantine and what happens when you have cases that are testing positive in the middle of that. We're continuously looking at the reintroduction and the opening and approval process for persons to return to Trinidad and Tobago. We've repatriated nationals from Venezuela, Suriname, Guyana, or cruise ship workers, which were just under a thousand. People seem to forget these things. A number of our oil and gas workers from around the world, or UE students from Jamaica and Barbados. And we've also been granting approval for certain sick persons to return to Trinidad again on a very controlled and managed basis. Today, we're bringing, we're bringing in persons from Cuba, not only our students, but Caribbean Airlines is doing a flight to Cuba and St. Martin today. And we're looking at 29 persons from Cuba and about 17 persons from St. Martin have been granted approvals. Some of these persons in St. Martin, I'll let you all know, are MIC workers who have been there since March and we've been asking them continue to stay in place. So just to let our nationals know across the world, we do feel for you. We do understand the difficulties. We all have persons outside, person, personal to us, who would like to come in but can't come in as we continue to manage this process. So today, we're bringing back persons from Cuba and St. Martin. The next influx we're looking at is Caribbean Airlines is likely to arrange a repatriation flight to bring back persons from Grenada. This will include some of, our, some of the students in Grenada. All of them will be granted exemptions. But just to let the public know, even when we grant these exemptions, there are persons who still choose to stay in place. So the next step for us is Grenada. We have also been looking at the United Kingdom and Canada as the next shortly. And there will be exemptions granted to these two jurisdictions this week and I just want to give the population an idea at this stage we are receiving a number of applications for exemptions for persons to come into Trinidad and Tobago each application may be one person or maybe a family so the application is only indicative of a physical application coming to us we have some applications with as much as 22 persons we have some with families of five and it goes like that currently just to give you an idea we have 924 applications for persons to come in from the United States. Multiply that exponentially. We have 175 from Canada, 146 from the United Kingdom, 55 from other areas in Europe, 50 from Middle Eastern countries, and 68 from Far East countries. And that is only those categories that I've identified. We have between 2,500 to 3,000 applications 
for exemption to come in currently in the system. We can only manage this by balancing the persons who are returning with our state quarantine facilities. We are looking, I'm in the middle of discussions with the Ministry of Health, at adding an additional state supervised quarantine at a hotel to allow persons, allow us here, opportunity to bring home more persons. So the next ones that we're looking at are Grenada. We're then looking at Canada. Canada because we have a number of flights going out starting from today, I believe, or in the next couple of days, taking the farmers who want to go and work as seasonal farmers in Canada out. The first flight is not going to bring anyone back, but we are looking at the second Caribbean Airlines flight allowing a number of persons back. You will be granted exemptions and then touch base with Caribbean Airlines to be able to come home. With respect to the United Kingdom and others in Europe, we're going to be doing the same thing. We have a way very difficult to try and prioritize. That everyone is not going to be able to come back on these first few flights, but it is showing that there is going to be this repatriation of persons who are currently in these jurisdictions. Bear with us. We know your patience has run low. We know how difficult it is. But the reason for this is we have to balance the numbers with those who are currently the ability or capacity in our public health care system to state quarantine. And we're looking to increase on the state quarantine, state supervised quarantine side. So what you will be receiving is an email saying that you've been granted an exemption. And we'll be asking you to indicate whether you'd be prepared to enter state supervised quarantine at one of the hotels that has been approved by the Ministry of Health. And if you are, that then allows more space in the state, the state quarantine side. And it is no pressure on anyone. This is how we're managing the numbers for persons to return. I'd like to make a point at this stage that we've made before. The Prime Minister has referred to it and it is worth repeating and important to repeat. The government's policy is not to permit neighboring islands, neighboring countries to be used as jumping points and launching pads into Trinidad and Tobago. Obviously, people who may be in far off places may want as other countries open up to make their way there. But understand, it's not going to be allowed as an immediate jumping point and launching pad into Trinidad and Tobago once we continue to maintain our border control. Another point that arose over the weekend that I'd like to draw to the population's attention. Every single person who is allowed to enter Trinidad and Tobago is being granted approval to do so by the Ministry of National Security. There is no known case, and I've actually launched an investigation to look into whether persons have been able to enter via aircraft into Trinidad without approval. There is no such case. There are certain persons making that allegation. Another point I'd like to make is persons should not be fooled, especially those persons outside of Trinidad and Tobago, by charter companies or persons holding themselves out as having, having a charter flight that there's been a blanket approval granted for a charter flight for persons to come in Trinidad and Tobago. That is not how the exemption system is working. Individuals are granted exemptions and then they make the arrangements to come back. If a group of individuals who have been granted exemption or approval to come in, then form themselves as a group and charter a flight to come in, that is something different. But there is no one, no one authorized to say that they can get exemption for you, get approval for you, and therefore you should come onto their charter plane because you will be granted approval and an exemption to return to Trinidad and Tobago. It simply does not work that way. There have also been a number of persons who have been permitted exemptions to come back in for specific health reasons. We're managing that process and running that as well, looking at the applications as we go through them. So this is just a reminder, there is no charter company out there. We are working with Caribbean Airlines. We've run a number of flights with them, repatriation flights, and those are the flights that are approved. But you would get your exemption. You'd be notified by the Ministry of National Security in advance that you've been granted an exemption. For example, the persons in Grenada, and they would be contacted. The persons we bring back today from Cuba and St. Martin. There is no charter company anywhere in the world that has the authority or the approval of the Ministry of National Security to bring persons back into Trinidad and Tobago without the individuals getting our prior approval. The last thing I'd like to say with respect to departure from Trinidad and Tobago, everyone who wants to depart Trinidad and Tobago is being permitted to do so. Of course, you make your own arrangements. I've asked for a dedicated email 
to be set up for that purpose so those exam those applications are mixed up with the applications for persons to enter Trinidad and Tobago all persons who want to leave are being granted approval to leave we have a number of people looking at for students looking to return to, to their universities abroad and, and just other persons in general from today please use the following email address if you're looking to depart Trinidad and Tobago it is depart exemption D-E-P-A-R-T exemption E-X-E-M-P-T-I-O-N at M-N-S M-N-S Ministry of National Security dot gov dot T-T we will put out a release later on today clarifying this email and, and, and just so everyone knows this is the email when you want to depart Trinidad and Tobago and everyone who wants to depart you are going to be granted exemption and you make your way out there are no commercial flights that are being granted approval to enter Trinidad and Tobago either for the rest of this month or anytime soon in the future we have not as yet granted approval for any commercial flights we are working with Cal for the flights that I've just told you all about so the next group of Canadian farmers that are going up to Canada we will be giving certain persons exemptions to come back on that flight and we're looking at the same with respect to the United Kingdom and then other jurisdictions so please stay tuned stay stay in touch we will continue to provide the information this is necessary as we balance the state quarantine facilities and the state supervised quarantine facilities with what we can manage in our public health care system to continue to keep the population safe here in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much, Minister Cox. Thank you very much, Minister. Members of the media, the floor is now open. Remember to identify yourself and the media house you represent before posing your question. 